All right. Good morning. Um, you know, we've had two two losses now, and um, you know, trying to find uh, that those complete games and uh, as a team. And uh, you know, there's been uh, a, times throughout the season where we've uh, played very complementary. Uh, it might be you know takeaways and and scoring. Uh, it might be you know one one team needs a little pick me up, uh, the other comes through, uh, but. You know, when the losses happen, um, those things get amplified. You know, you're, you certainly uh, really look into that more. We got to play, play better as a team. Um, you know, it's what great teams do. And so we haven't been our best uh, in those two games in particular. And I know there's other times we can always look and know we got to improve, but um, can't have the mistakes, can't have the penalties, you know, got to have better execution. You know, all those things that put you behind the eight ball you know, throughout the course of the game. And here in the SEC, you know, there's such a fine line, obviously, between winning and losing, you know, and that's how you get beat. And so, you know, that's on all of us. Um, it starts with me just uh, continuing to set the standard, um, you know, that will lead to high performance. And uh, I, can, I know that uh, it just comes down to competing, competing, um, com being solution oriented uh, every day, you know, bringing everything you have to the football team, I'm confident in a group of guys that uh, want to be great. There's no doubt about it. I can see in their response each and every day, um, just showing up to work. And so, um, you know, I have no doubt that that's going to continue to happen. Um, you know, we know that just being a championship football team is is hard. Uh, we all signed up for it. We all want to want to continue to improve our awareness, uh, you know, our intensity. Um, and that's not just intensity on the football field and all that. That's just everything we do. We know it takes everything we got. And, uh, you know, that's what we signed up for. So um, just, you know, I think the biggest thing is the message has been over the weeks, not just this week or not just after Vanderbilt, but the weeks, you know, all season long, the message is always going to be there's never going to be excuses. That's the one thing that, you know, only softens character. It, uh it lowers the standard, and that will never happen. And so, um, again, talk about being solution oriented. Continue about moving forward. You know, making sure you got the right people here. And I firmly believe that we have a lot of great people with a lot of great skill sets, whether it's uh, players, staff, um, and that they're all working together. And so, uh, really, you know, know that that's going to be the case. Um, you know, kind of moving on to a couple other things. Uh, just with injuries, you know, I'll give you an update. Um, I know with Keon, Keon Sab, um, he does have a lower uh, extremity injury. You know, we're still gathering information here, but uh, we do expect him to be down for a while. You know, and so, you know, that uh, could be an extended amount of time, and we'll just continue to, to evaluate that. I'll, I know there's a lot of, I think, one position group in particular, just kind of put them all together. Uh, the all the other DBs, I think, you know, just look to see how they progress throughout the week. Uh, a lot of similarities between uh, just kind of the level of the injuries that they all have, you know. And I, right now, uh, I'd be expecting them all to be able to play uh, on Saturday, so um, be ready to go. Uh, when it comes to Missouri, uh, just Coach Drinkwitz, uh, especially over the last two years, but I know it takes time for him to build to this. Has done a great job. Uh, you know, great football coach, uh, just as far as how he's developing guys and um, you know bringing the right people into his program. Um, got some transfers that have added to you know uh, a, a solid group of returning starters, uh, 17 and three over the last two years. Um, just a resilient group, won some close games, and so uh, we got a you know another great task at hand uh, as they're all going to always going to be in the SEC, and uh, you know our guys are looking forward to the challenge. I can. I know this week's gonna be, you know, one where we get back to work and uh, want to bring a homecoming win home, uh, back home for all our fans, all our alumni. Thank you, Coach. Let's start with uh, Charlie Potter here on the right. Yeah, Coach. Just with Jalen, uh, is he dealing with anything from an injury standpoint? Maybe banged up a little bit, and if not, what do you do to kind of build his confidence up after the last two weeks? Sure. Yeah, I think at this point in the year, um, I don't think there's, I don't think there's many guys that put a lot of that play a lot of snaps who don't have something. You know, and just uh, working through it, but um, he's more than capable. Uh, and you know, as he goes through the week, uh, you know, you're just uh, ready to play on Saturday. So there's nothing that's going to be holding him back from be going out there and being able to help us get a win. Um, confident of that. Man, right side, Kirk. Kirk, right there. 
Uh, coach, I know the head coach is responsible for everything, but I wonder if there are some coaches take exclusive uh, uh, responsibility for things like play calling, for instance, or substitutions or clock management. I wonder what sort of things you are, besides your veto power, anything that are exclusive to you. Yeah, I think all those things you mentioned are are part of uh, the the job responsibility and how I look at it, and uh, you know take all those things seriously. And so um, every element of the program, it's it's always uh, you know things that I'm going to discuss if it involves other people, which usually it does, uh, and go to those people. Uh, you know, making sure our coaching staff is always aligned on the same page, whether it is the play calling, whether it is the situational. Uh, piece um, off the field, recruiting efforts, uh, making sure everything's always aligned. And so, uh, you know, evaluating, um, you know, I will tell, I'll tell you this, a lot of times there's uh, situations that do come up uh, that, uh, that really work out for you. And, you know, you think about many times where, you know, in the past with different teams and, and all of that, you know, maybe it's not the decision you would have made as far as that particular call, but there's a lot of good calls that you can make that all work. And so is what happens is you got to make sure that the guys are prepared, that they're confident, and then going out and execute uh, what it is that uh, that you've been working on. So, um, you know, I feel full confidence in, in who we have and my job is to continue to guide them, uh, give them, uh, you know, my perspective uh, be there in the moment in the games uh, to continue to make sure we're sticking to the plan that we, uh, you know, that we worked on, the plan that uh, was created, uh, the ones that the guys have have practiced, and uh, just making sure we're staying the course, you know, in that moment, and then also staying the course as we continue to develop our players over the course of the year, years, and their careers. So Chase Barlett, uh, I wanted to ask you about the personal foul against Kendrick Law at the end of the game to set up the fourth and 22. What was your, I don't think you got asked about that on Saturday. What was your message to him after the game on that? Yeah, I mean, well, the message continues to be right with the team. It's not just one. It's, it's you know, we got to gotta learn from those moments. Those moments are big. And, um, you know, our choices, our decisions, our words, our actions, I mean, all of those things, um, you know, they have to be focused on what's best for our team. And obviously, in that moment, um, you know, we're fighting to, to try to find a way to win. And uh, it's a big moment. And so, um, you know, we got to make sure we, of course, address them. But we got to, you know, we, we can't have continue to have the mistakes. And, uh, you know, that those are in particular that we can control. Some things you just can't control, the things that happen to you, the way the ball bounces and all of those things. So. You know, I think just everything in general, it starts with our thoughts. We got to make sure other people's thoughts don't become ours. And uh, we got to make sure that, you know, if someone's if someone's talking to us, we got to we got to learn to walk the other way and, um, you know, be a more emotionally disciplined uh, in every facet, not just the high aggression type things, but also just when, you know, the momentum swings and things like that happen in a game, be able to trust in your preparation, trust in what you're doing. But uh, yeah, we got to be better. We got to be better there. And obviously that's, that's an important part of what great teams do is uh, be great in those times. Second row back, probably. Obviously, if Keon's going to be out for any time, you're going to need Bray Hubbard to step up. Just what have you seen from him and how much of his, has he grown in, in this season? Yeah, you know, Bray's been working hard for this opportunity. And, um, you know, he, he, he worked uh, he, not just last week, but every week he's worked uh, to be ready. And uh, we had no doubt that he would be uh, come, come Saturday uh, when he was called upon. And uh, he'll go out there again this week. And, and uh, you know, our team really believes in him. He, he does a lot of things on special teams. And you can see it every day in practice. And so um, you know, he's been around the program. And now, you know, this is that time, that next up, you know, next, next man up mentality. You know, that's what we talk about. And that's what it's got to be. And, uh, you know, uh, I know, again, high level of want to that he has. Uh, and, you know, I'm excited for his opportunity. You know, I'm, I love Keon to death. And Keon's a, he's a, he's a warrior, man. I mean, there's, there's more things I want to say about Keon and what, uh, what he did to go out there and try to help our football team. Uh, but there's, uh, you know, next man up mentality. And, and I'm excited for, you know, the opportunity that Bray has in front of him. Jump 
across the aisle here tonight. What needs to happen offensively to better capitalize on some of those defensive takeaways? Yeah, you know, sat, it's different, I think, each week, right? We talk about matchups and how they present themselves. But a lot of the things were just, um, you know, drive stalling because we were, we were um, I don't want to say it's always shooting yourself in the foot, but we weren't executing or something would do, it would happen. Uh, and a lot of times it was, right? False starts or whatever it might be. Um, we just wasted plays and got ourselves behind the chains, weren't able to, have our full offense available on every play. And, um, you know, we were good at that early in the season. And we got to get back to, um, you know, taking advantage of those opportunities, playing off the defense and, and uh, those momentum swings, you know, keeping them on our side when those, when those times come. So um, credit the defense now a couple weeks in a row. They've, they've got the ball loose or, um, they've, they've made some interceptions, and uh, again, we got to play team football and make those opportunities really pay off. Just to clarify our knee injuries in the secondary, does that include Zabian? Because I know we didn't see him for most of the game there. Yeah, that'd be Zabian, um, Devontae. Is there anyone else you're wondering about? Red, Red, yep. Red would be in that group as well. Left side, Colin. Hey, Kalen. Um, I'm curious, do you, do you feel like there's still a learning curve uh, in terms of Jalen Milrow and the rest of the offense in terms of learning your offensive scheme, you know, adapting to, to what you expect out of them? Or is it kind of? Yeah, I'm just really, I mean, I'm pleased with a lot of the things that he's done and the way he's uh, really wanted to learn the offense, uh, our system. I think there's always a, um, a management of a game that goes between coaching staff and, and your quarterback because he's the ultimate guy on the field that runs the show. And, uh, you know, um, just, uh, yeah, I think when you, when you ask, is there a learning curve or, you know, there, I think there always is. And I think it, it continues, but obviously we're halfway through the season and uh, we got we to gotta make sure we continue to do things he, he's comfortable with, uh, which I think he's comfortable with, you know, everything we ask him. You know, and, uh, you know, there's there's also then situations you get into that are in front of you. Um, you know, how many times do you like to be in second longs, third and longs? You know, those are hard on any quarterback, no matter how good you are. And so um, there's I know in Jalen's case, um, I know how he takes it all on himself. But there's other things that we all can do to help support him and put him keep him from being in those tough spots, especially when you have a you know, a loud environment, um, and it's it's hard enough just to be able to communicate with your with your team, um, make those extra little checks or calls that need to be made. Um, you know, that energy is a lot. We need to we need to come through and help him out a little bit more too. And just like uh, just like you'd guess, uh, he he can continue to improve well as well. A couple more questions. Let's start with Katie. It's obviously been a small sample size overall with his number of attempts here at Alabama, but in his career, Graham's one for four on kicks of 50 yards or more. And we've seen Connor handle the kickoffs this year. Has there been any consideration of Connor maybe doing longer kicks or is Graham kind of the guy y'all are sticking with for all field goals? Yeah, I have a lot of confidence in Connor. I've really seen Connor in practice uh, continue to uh, really be more consistent uh, than I remember in the spring. And, um, you know, I think we were right on the edge of what Graham was capable of. I felt that, uh, did think about, you know, just which way the kicks, even though there was a, just a small wind, um, looking for that little bit, I knew it would be close. Um, you know, you go with your gut on those things and, uh, um, you know, obviously it came up just short, but I felt like he was on point. I felt like he good, put a good solid uh, swing on it. And, uh, you know, we'll, we, got, we got a lot of confidence in both of those guys, to be honest with you. Finish up, Jonathan, all the way to that. Hey, Coach, Kane was talking about in adverse times like this, he said you got to keep the main thing, the main thing, focus on this Missouri game. As you get later in the season, things like standings, rankings, that kind of thing creeps in and, and maybe becomes a conversation. How do you do that, and how do you keep the guys focused on just what's ahead this week? Yeah, I still feel like, you know, really, or my, my experiences have been you, you, there's too much football left. Um, and maybe the last week you try to give some perspective because uh, there's so many things that can change between now and then. So that's really, you know, as Kane, I guess, it said, you know, that's really 
you know, where our focus is at is uh, just on on this game, 1-0. I already heard in the locker room from our players, they understand the big picture is one thing. In order to make the big picture relevant, we have to take care of what's in front of us. And uh, we got to continue to, you know, build, do what championship teams do, build on uh, championship caliber teams do, build on your belief, uh, build on your, you know, just intensity and everything that uh, that you do. And, um, and then just have some grit, you know. Uh, I think if you look across uh, the championships that have been won this program, uh, obviously I wasn't a part of them, uh, but there's probably a lot of common things that I just mentioned that are that are, you know, right there. And I I've, I firmly believe that this team is capable of that. Um, we just gotta jump over that that line that is a fine line on, you know, the winning and losing and what it takes to be great. And um, again. Uh, we have the people here to, that are going to work work hard uh, to do everything they can uh, within their means to to make that happen. So uh, I'm excited to get back to work. We knew this wasn't going to be easy. Uh, we knew this was uh, winning a championship uh, each and every year, especially in the SEC, is going to be hard. We knew um, there were going to be challenges along with uh, transitions, all that. No excuses. You know, we got to continue to move forward. We got to continue to build. And uh, you know that's what this week is all about: is taking that next step. Thank you.